Hello, I'm Ms. Joyce. I want to go over with you some expectations, policies, and procedures that will help us to use our class time effectively this year for us to get a lot done in class and so that you can learn as much as possible. This is an example of a flipped lesson. I'm going to try to use some flipped lessons in my classroom to help us to use our time efficiently so that we'll have other time in class to work on labs, projects, and collaborative group work. Through our flipped lessons, we're going to be making an interactive notebook. We don't have textbooks, so we're going to make our own in a way. You're going to make notes, important details, things for yourself to remember in your own little notebook. So that brings us to what should you bring to class to be effective. The first thing is a composition book. That is one of these. has all the pages connected, so you're not going to be tearing them out. You're going to keep them all in one place. You're going to take your notes from the flipped lesson videos and we're going to add some other things along the way. But we'll be talking more about that as time goes on. The next thing we need is a binder. That would be like one of these with three rings. You've all seen one of these before. You want to have some dividers to keep your classwork, your homework, maybe some loose notebook paper, tests and quizzes in this binder. That's also a good place to put your course syllabus in case you ever have any questions about how I grade things or what these policies and procedures are on this video and you can't access this video. The next thing on our list would be a calculator. It is ideal if you could acquire one of these nice fancy calculators so that you are really used to using this and you don't only get to use this when you come to class. You would want to get a TI-83, an 83 plus, an 84, an 84 plus. Anything in that category would be fine. If you have any questions about that, just let me know. The next thing would be some mechanical pencils. Mechanical pencils are important, so then you don't have to get up out of your seat to sharpen your pencil. You've got your lead, your pencil, your eraser, all that really handy for all the math we're going to be doing, and you can erase your work as needed. Very important. Loose leaf notebook paper, the kind you can take in and out of your binder. So when you need it, you've got it handy. Graph paper. Never know when you need a good piece of graph paper so that you can just keep working and you don't have to say, Miss Joyce, we're going to put that graph. You've got some graph paper handy. If you don't, I try to keep it around, but it's always best for you to have your own. Let's see. The next thing on the list is some note cards. Three, and a, three by five note cards. These are just good to make yourself some flashcards. They're good for vocabulary. They're good for important formulas that you just need to memorize. And it may not be easy to study them when they're in your interactive notebook, but flashcards can help you take things from your notebook and memorize them for a test or a quiz. The next thing I would recommend is just a nice set of thin markers so that when we're making things, especially in our notebook, you've got a nice set. It's also good not to use Sharpies because they go through the paper. So I would recommend something that's more water-based, like Crayola or Rose Art, one of those. They sell them at the Dollar Tree or the Walmart right around the corner. So that brings us over here to collaborative groups. One thing we're going to do a lot of is work in groups. That can be anything from a pair, a group of three, a group of four. I try not to go larger than four because your time is just not used as efficiently. But it depends on our activity. But as I am teaching and giving you some instruction, maybe through the flipped lesson, maybe through direct instruction, you sitting in your groups need to be quiet and listen and pay attention. But when I give you your assignment and I ask you to work collaboratively, I expect that in these groups you're talking about math and you're collaborating with your group about that assignment. That way when I circulate and I come to your table, I should never hear that you have a question that your group can answer. Because if I come over there and I'm answering your question that everyone in that group understood and could have helped you with, I'm not using my time efficiently and neither are you. You want to reach out to your group and help them as needed and when I come over, I'm answering questions that your whole group needs help with. And that way I get to help you in everything you need from me, but you also get the opportunity to teach and be taught by your peers. Let me share with you this lovely piece of paper right here. Get it straightened out. This is from a workshop uh, several years ago. I think it's a valuable little piece of research where if you notice, let me get it straightened back out. We don't learn a whole lot by just reading or hearing or seeing, but the most that we learn is right down here. If you notice, when you're given the opportunity to discuss with others, to experience something personally, or to teach someone else, is 95%
when learning takes place. So that's where I want you to strive to get to, is when you can teach someone math, you truly understand it. And I always want you to aim for that level. Don't stop at 70% and just be discussing it with someone. Really try to explain it to them and see if they understand it. A good thing to do is try to teach your parents what you're learning in class and see if they get it. And then you know you really understand it for the test or quiz or just for yourself. Now let's look at a few more things. There are a few policies and procedures that we need to go through just to make sure we're all on the same page. For instance, attendance. When you are tardy, you will need to bring a Hawks on time pass. Most of you know this, but just in case you don't, you have now been informed. If you are more than five minutes late without a pass, I'm, I'm supposed to write you up for skipping. Now, that's just the rule of the school and it's gonna be the rule of this class. So try not to be more than five minutes late. And if you are late, bring a Hawks on time pass so that you can get here and we can get started on time. Cardi, more than half of the class, you will be counted absent. You need to be here. If you're not here, you're not learning anything. So make sure you are here. Try to be here every day, but if you are sick, please don't bring your sickness to school. Stay home, get well soon, and be back here as soon as possible and come with me, come to see me to get your makeup work. The official Holly Springs High School tardy policy is found in your Holly Springs handbook. So I'm not going into great detail about that, but you can read more about the official school policies and procedures in your handbook. But just keep in mind to bring a pass. If you're more than five minutes late, you're skipping. And if you're more than half the class late, you're absent and you don't wanna be absent. For cell phones and electronic devices, you are expected to turn them off during the school day, not on vibrate, not on airplane mode, but completely off. This is your warning. So if I see you with your phone, I will ask to take it and I will turn it into the front office and your parents can pick it up. I don't play around with phones. I just take them and turn them in. So please make sure you follow the school policy or you'll be picking your phone up with your parents in the front office. For food or drinks, there is no food in class. If you need to bring a bottle of water, that is acceptable. Other than that, I do not expect you to be eating and drinking. You can save that for lunchtime. You can get some water between classes. Clean up. If we leave the room better than we found it, then we've done our job. So whenever you come in, even if it looks like it's not in the best shape, we're going to leave it that way. We're gonna push our chairs in, clean up trending trash that's around your area. If there's something that you don't wanna pick up, let me know, I will come get it off the floor. And then you wanna turn off and put away your calculator. Don't just put it away, but turn it off to reserve those batteries. Cause in school, we wanna save our school funds for something more than just batteries if we can help it. So we can have more fun things to do. And we have a little bit more to talk about. So in our list of a few more things, here's a list of what not to wear. No headgear, no sunglasses, no bandanas, no hats, no exception. Do not put anything on your head. We want to see your bright and shining face every day and we won't be able to see it if you're blocking our view. So please make sure you take any headgear off as you enter the building and you are free to put it back on as you leave campus. There are no undergarments that should be showing. I should have no idea what's on underneath your clothing. Keep your clothes on and keep your undergarments covered. Plain and simple. No clothing with offensive words or inappropriate labels. I think you all are in high school and know what I mean by that. If I see that you have on something inappropriate, I'm gonna send you to the right office location and we'll have to you know, get you a better outfit because you didn't wear the proper thing to school that day. You want to use your time wisely. Do not come into class prepared to waste time. I don't like to waste time. I don't want to waste your time. So don't waste mine and don't waste your group's time, which you're going to be working with frequently. So I expect that you are hard at work and not hardly working every day. Come to tutorials as needed. I'm here to help. Please use that time. Come and see me if you have any questions about anything or if you just want to make certain that you're doing things correctly. Keep up with assignments and due dates. You're in high school. You need to start doing these things if you haven't started already. If you ever have a question about an assignment or a due date, ask. Ask your group, ask me, ask some other teacher. Anything to do to keep up with your assignments. It's very important. Make up your work when you're absent. We are working while you're not here. So do not come to class and ask, did y'all do anything yesterday? Yes, we did. We always do something. We're going to do something every day. So if you're not here, we have done something. And please check with anyone and everyone and make sure you get caught up on that. Make sure that if you are working in your notebook, leave space for the notes you missed. Gather up assignments that you need to turn in and come to tutoring and make sure that those things are completed. 
that's all for now. We're going to discuss some more details in class in person, but I hope this helps us to go over some of my personal expectations of you 